BlyVault.net presents Where the River Bends, a fly fishing short story, and now Where the River Bends. Badger was born on September 18, 1854 in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and taught himself to tie flies at an early age. Originally, he imported all the tools and necessary material from England. The American Angler's Book, published in 1864 by Thaddeus Norris, was the book Badger would use as he took on, what I'm sure seemed an almost insurmountable endeavor, of tying English-style flies to fish in the upper northeast of the United States. He started to write to a couple of Englishmen, Frederick M. Halford and G. E. M. Skews. These two individuals were notable figures of the era in the sport of fly fishing and indeed they would return letters and the correspondence grew, answering questions from previous letters and giving some thoughts on ways forward that Badger had potentially not thought of did help keep the young man motivated. Fishing primarily in the Catskills, Badger had been taking the advice of his friends from across the pond to help perfect his tying abilities. However, the English flies often wouldn't work well as they poorly imitated the insect species of the West. So through hours of careful study of the insects at hand, he would rework the English flies to make more suitable versions to fit his needs on such rivers as the Neversink and Beaverkill. And they did work much better. He would document his work, and a few years prior to 1890, he would start to correspond with another Englishman by the name of R. B. Marston. Mr. Marston purchased the Fishing Gazette in 1878, a weekly publication that was not very popular nor widespread. He turned it into a powerhouse publication with better articles and the very latest and greatest trends in the world of fly fishing of the time. In 1890, Marston would start to publish some of these letters that had been sent to him by his American contemporary Badger. These letters were focused on the art of dry flies and fishing them. The cutting edge of it, in fact, his acute attention to detail of the flies he was creating all came from the careful study of the insects themselves. Eventually, the entire world was taking note of the incredible work that Badger had been doing, and they wanted to know of his new discoveries, techniques, and whatever else this veteran of fly fishing was thinking. Inevitably, more publishers came calling. Everyone wanted the inside scoop from Badger. He did some writing for The Naturalist, and in 1903 would become a major contributor to Forest and Stream on a regular basis, which I'm sure seemed like a good fit as this publication was out of New York, his own backyard. This magazine would eventually merge with Field and Stream in 1930. Badger's reputation for fishing the dry fly ultimately led to a nickname that lingers on to this day, the father of the American school of dry fly fishing. Quite the name. There's still a not-for-profit group that bears that name today in remembrance of Badger. And we may never know if he published some things that have been lost to time. You see, once he started writing for Forest and Stream, he often used the pseudo name of Badger Hackle. That's right, Badger was not Badger at all. Badger was none other than Theodore Gordon, the inventor of the ever-popular Quill Gordon Dry Fly. And now you've heard a long-lost story from a tires bench and one you can share with your friends when you meet them, where the river bends. I was at the park the other afternoon when I came across your subscribe button with a wheelbarrow full of oranges. It quickly made sense when I saw him kiss one of the oranges and then hurl it at the sun. Well, that orange used gravity to punch him in the nose upon its 20-foot re-entry into idiocracy. Maybe a quick explanation of sun-kissed oranges before you take him off leash would be prudent. Take care, my friends, and as always, happy tying.